good morning. Welcome to our daily devotional series. We're going through the book of Exodus. We've been doing just a verse or two at a time here and trying to see what did it mean then? Does it apply to us today? How can we rightly divide the word of God? So today we're gonna to talk about respect. There was a comedian years ago, Rodney Dangerfield, he, his whole shtick was he never got respect. That was his thing. He would be fooling with his tie. And he was one of these, like, I never get a break in life. Nobody ever respects me. And he would tell jokes like, yeah, even when I was growing up, for, my father gave me a bat for Christmas. But then it flew away. You know, not a baseball bat. He gave him a bat. Never got respect. I used to play hide and go seek, but when I would go hide, nobody would seek from me. That's how it was. We're gonna talk about respect today, but in a much more serious way and not joking. Do not blaspheme God. I, I read past this last time. This is verse 28, my bad. Do not blaspheme God or curse the ruler of your people. Now, first of all, the Hebrew there could be in some uh, translations, the judges because they acted in God's stead. Don't blaspheme God or the judges. My NIV has possibly judges. Do not revile the judges or curse the ruler of your people. That was a command. In other words, don't speak evil of the leaders that God has put over you. Religiously, civil, the office that they hold must be respected, even if the person has a lot uh, that doesn't uh, exactly thrill you. You respect the office. Oh, we're going now into foreign language. I'm about to, very soon, I'm going to begin to speak Hungarian to you, okay? Because the verses I'm about to read, do any Christians read this today? Okay, so don't speak bad, don't curse God or speak uh, bad about judges or curse the ruler of your people. So in Romans 13, it says this, let everyone, now New Testament, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities for there's no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Let me read again, then we'll sum it up. See, this respect for office it really was so real that in Acts 23, when Paul's being tried, Someone says something nasty to him, and he says, yo, you white-walled uh, tomb, how, why would you say something? And then somebody slaps Paul and says, don't you know who that was? That was the high priest. And Paul went, oh, I'm sorry, my bad. My bad. It's found in Acts 23, 3 through 5. He said, I didn't know he was the high priest because God says, don't speak rough, don't, don't speak bad about the rule of your people. Even though Paul was a Christian, and this was a Jewish high priest persecuting and uh, cr uh, the Christians, even though the, the authorities that Paul's talking about were the Roman emperors who claimed to be God, talk about like a, a government out of whack, or how about Jesus saying, pay taxes to Caesar? Caesar, he claims he's God. Jesus said, get along with it. Just go. Pay taxes. Render unto Caesar what Caesar's, render unto God what's God. But the strongest words about this are actually found in 1 Peter. Listen to this one, 1 Peter 2, verse 17. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers, fear God, honor the emperor. Don't be talking disrespectfully because that's going to make you a bad citizen. See, we... Oh, what are we going to do, folks? What are we going to do? 1 Peter 5.5. 5. In the same way, you who 
are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but shows grace to the humble. So what do we make of this? We shouldn't be a vulgar, cheap kind of person when you're a Christian. Let me put it this way. We should not talk disrespectfully of people in authority. We can disagree with them. Let's work to have them replaced and use the means that we have. But vulgarity and arrogance and disrespect is not part of anything Jesus would do. Can you imagine Jesus on social media saying things that supposed Christians are saying? No, for real. For real. No, but my cause is just. That's what everyone says. But that's not the point here. The point is don't talk and curse and talk disrespectful of, of the people in charge. Don't talk nasty about President Clinton when he's in office. He's the president. Don't talk nasty about President Bush. He's the president. You disagree with him? Fine. Vote him out of office. After two terms, they did. Don't speak evil of President Obama, okay? Don't speak evil of President Trump. You disagree? That's fine. But you don't curse the ruler of your people. Oh, Pastor Simba, you're going to get letters for that one. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Tell you this is not in the Bible? Old and New Testament. Jesus does not want us to be disrespectful to authority. Are there bad police officers? Are there bad cops? Yeah, we know that, and it's horrible. The racist tendencies of some, but for the most part, most cops aren't, don't act like that, okay? And if you do away with the police, totally, as some people are saying, I don't know what's wrong with them, do away with all the police, what will be left of our country and our society? And who will suffer the most? The poorest people. The poorest people. The people who are most vulnerable. So fix things. Don't lie. Tell the truth. Let's do something constructive. But don't get vulgar and disrespectful. Because Jesus wouldn't do that. Paul wouldn't do that. Christians shouldn't do that. Oh, Pastor Simba, what do you live in a dinosaur age? It's a new day today. It's a day of social media and everybody thinking that their opinion is truth. See, to find truth, you have to study, learn. You have to be in the know. But to have an opinion, anybody can have an opinion. You know? And then you broadcast your opinion. And the way it is now, let, let's talk about this. There's such disrespect among Christians. The world, look, I don't expect anything better. It is what it is out there. But Christians, if we disagree on anything now, I hear from pastors now around the country, one just last night. If anyone disagrees with your political position on or anything on COVID-19, it's you're a demon and I'm coming at you. Brothers and sisters, this should not be so. Blessed are the peacemaker. For love is patient. Love is kind. Love keeps no record of wrong. I'll tell you what's happening right now. There's a sifting going on. God is sifting his own people in the church to find out who's real, who's not. Here's what happens. They would take the wheat, the husk, and the kernel inside. they toss it up in the air, and it would come down as they're doing that. It would separate the husk, which was worthless, from the kernel, which was good, could be eaten, could be cooked. And that's what's happening now. People who are more into themselves and their opinions and the culture rather than the word of God, they're showing their colors. They are showing their colors. Don't give me that Bible verse. That's what someone said to me years ago when we were trying to reason about something. I don't want your Bible verse. And she was a minister. This is why some people go, oh, don't give me your Bible verse. This is what's happening now. There will be people who will cling to God's word, even though it hurts, even though it's hard to do. Oh, God, give me the grace to be kind and act polite, even though people are really nasty. Or there will be people who say, man, I'm letting it all hang out. You know, I got to be me. You got to see the real me. I don't want to see the real you. And I don't want you to see the real me because it's nasty. 
I want to see Jesus. How about it? Have I reached anybody today? Let's ask God to help us that we radiate Jesus Christ to everyone we see today. Amen.